Hello and welcome, here's what's coming up on Pride today. Laomi Maldonado is clapping back at HBO, we have the latest. And with New Year's Eve coming up, we're taking you to Miami. Plus we're going one-on-one -on -one with the icon herself, Jean Smart. Hey everyone, I'm Ricky Cornish. Thanks for joining me as we take a look at stories making headlines. Laomi Maldonado isn't holding back on our feelings on Legendary's cancellation. The Vogue and Competition series was removed from HBO Max and the judge has a lot to say. In a tweet, Laomi said, HBO Max, I'm gagging at how y'all just wiped Legendary off of your app as if it never existed. Along with elaborate dance numbers, the show brought contestants powerful backstories, highlighting their culture and the lives of these incredible, often inspiring queer and trans contestants. For more on this story, head to pride.com. And if you're ready for the ultimate party this New Year's Eve, then we have some tips. Miami is bringing the heat with Dreamland, the immersive LGBTQ plus art, music, and wellness festival. Known as the Queer Coachella, Dreamland events will run from December 29th to January 2nd. Musical performances include Purple Disco Machine, Sophie Tucker, and Magic Mike Live. The weekend will begin with the Dreamland Gives Back Party, a fundraiser for Femhouse, a nonprofit organization that fosters opportunities for women and gender neutral individuals. There will also be complimentary wellness programs, visual art installations, and much more. Tickets for all events are available now at dreamlandnye.com. And the icon Jean Smart is starring in a brand new film, Babylon. Our Tracy E. Gilchrist is chatting with the star in a new interview. Let's take a look. Jean, thank you so much for chatting with me. Thank you. The film is obviously just so sweeping and uh, towering, and you get to play this kind of amalgamation of uh, gossip columnists who hold so much power and sway. Right. And um, along the way, Eleanor, your character gets to do some kind of unsavory things, really making or breaking someone's career. And but as a woman, she does not have a lot of options in Hollywood to you know ensure her stability. So I wonder if you would talk a little bit about those complexities. Yes, I think that um, you sort of see uh, in that 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 last big scene between her and Brad mm -hmm. uh, or Jack. Um, I think you see her kind of, she reveals something about herself in that scene because she starts out, it's almost like she's, she's impatient with the fact that he's not being realistic about his career and the fact that he's, his new movie's a flop and all of that. And, but at the same time, by the end of the speech, you see that she's just as caught up in this magical thing called movies as anybody. I mean, she talks about angels and ghosts and, and being immortal on film, right. where you're literally, you're, you know, somebody who wasn't even born yet will, will come across you in 50 years and mm. feel like they know you. And, and that is what, I guess, is so fascinating about movies. Because when you think about when people first made movies, it must have been just astonishing to watch a person moving on a screen. Right. I mean, that must have been, so it didn't matter what they did, people would be, watch anything. They'd watch someone just, as they did back then, just sort of walk into a room and sit down and, you know, or a train coming at the camera or a, a street, right. a street car going by. I mean, it just must have been mesmerizing, yeah. you know, and, and so, and you think of how how sophisticated movies are now and in such a short period of time. My name is Ricky Cornish. Thanks for joining me on Pride today. Check us out on Advocate Channel, streaming daily on YouTube.